The Washington Commanders have landed a big time leader, a perennial pro bowler and all pro. Sources say Bobby Wagner, the former Seahawks star, also spent time with the Los Angeles Rams, is signing with the Washington Commanders. Can we get a golf clap right now going for Adam Peters? All right, first year Hold GM. On. My man is putting on a master class right now on how to rebuild the culture, how to rebuild the roster. From day one, we knew this Washington Commanders team was never going to be the same. Under new management, new GM, Adam Peters absolutely blew this job away. I mean, firstly, hiring Dan Quinn, who quite frankly, everybody wants to play for. I mean, we'll talk about the power of Dan Quinn in a second, but can we please... Please appreciate what of Adam Peters, what a job he has done for this team so far. I mean, listen to what he said right before all of this started happening. I wonder what you think of the current roster. I believe that there's a few cornerstone pieces in this roster. I believe we have a lot of work to do, and that's just evaluating everybody. And you heard it right there. From the jump, Adam Peters knew he needed to change the culture of this team. And the first step was hiring a head coach. And he did a perfect job by bringing in former Falcons head coach and defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, Dan Quinn, a guy that players want to play for. And we've seen that throughout the entirety of the offseason so far. He has brought in free agents that I didn't think they were going to be able to get, including Bobby Wagner, right? This was a perfect hiring to start this commander's rebuild. We're following breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. Dan Quinn has reached a verbal agreement to become the next head coach of the Washington Commanders. This just in out of the NFL where Cliff Kingsbury has agreed to a deal to become the commander's next offensive coordinator. The latest running back amidst a flurry yeah. of running back news today is Austin Eckler, who is signing with the commanders. Now, to start this video, I actually wanted to start backwards and talk about their most recent signings and then get to the ones that happened earlier in the offseason. Now, let's start right away with Bobby Wagner. Now, this might not seem like a big addition because he is in the tail end of his career, but Bobby Wagner makes so much of a difference right away. I mean, let's just go look at his, at his numbers really quickly. All right, guys, so look at this nonsense. Ever since entering the NFL... Bobby Wagner has never had a season under 100 tackles. Do you know how insane that really is when you think about it? Not only that, but he's coming off his best season, his career high 183 tackles, 96 solo, which is up there for highest in terms of his career as well, three and a half sacks. This dude has been absolutely phenomenal. And if you look down the interception, the guy can get interceptions as well not only can he drop back into coverage he can stop the run right 100 run stuffs in his career 68 pass deflections he gets the quarterback but the the surest thing of all is he's one of the most reliable tacklers in the nfl now listen, I understand that Bobby Wagner will be 34 years old by the start of the 2024 season and is one of the oldest active linebackers in the NFL, but like we saw before, it hasn't limited his production. He has still been insane in his career, right? But what this does is bring leadership, a guy who can reset the culture here in Washington, but also show the free agency world from for now and the future that this is a place guys want to play and they should want to play. Under Dan Quinn, he has changed defenses across the NFL. Last season, the Dallas Cowboys had one of the most you know, electric players in Deron Bland. The year before that, Trayvon Diggs, right? Their defenses, Michael Parsons, Lane Van Ress, their defenses have been amazing, right? And you look at a guy like Jalen Smith, who was pretty good with Dallas and then suddenly is gone from Dallas and now is not even in the NFL anymore, right? Dan Quinn is a guy that can revitalize players' career. And I feel like in Washington, he is going to change everything. Signing Wagner reunites him with Danny Quinn after a decade when they were together in Washington, and this is a big boost to their linebacker and core. It can help develop and have leadership for a young guy like Jamin Davis in setting the tone for this Dan Quinn defense. This is a huge addition, really. It really is. Now, real quickly, guys, before we get into Jeremy Chin, I didn't even know he was a free agent one. 
and two, the fact that they got this guy is insane, okay? Before we get into that, though, do me a big favor. Hit the like button. Let's get this video up to 500 likes. If that happens, we're going to be covering the Commanders for the rest of the offseason. I got you guys covered. And also, subscribe if you're new. It is free. It doesn't cost anything. And I got you guys covered from here on out. Now, with that being said, comment down below the number one if you like what they've done so far and give me a letter grade as well now jeremy chin this is an insane pickup now i'm not too sure if he's gonna come in here and be a day one starter i mean you look at their defense right now you have Derek forrest and percy butler two guys they really are high on but jeremy chin is a difference maker let's talk a little bit about the former second round pick for carolina all right, now let's start this video off by saying Jeremy Chin was in a very weird situation in Carolina. His first two years, he was one of the best safeties, best young safeties, I should say, in the NFL. Over 117 tackles his first season, over 107 tackles his second season with two or four sacks over his career, three forced fumbles, right, two interceptions, and then he hit this low. And in 2022, only playing 11 games, 70 tackles was still pretty productive. And then 2023, you see a major drop off now the reason is the panthers didn't know how to use him they suddenly put him in a slot cornerback role and it was just not what they needed to do he only played 12 games but 30 tackles is not good at all they were just misusing this guy like a crazy right we've already seen the potential over his first two years in the nfl now right the big thing about this signing is you get him coming off his worst season right now what that means is they get him for dirt cheap right this is a unbelievable deal, right? It's a one-year prove-it deal, but this is a guy who can play football at a high level. Now, Jeremy Chin was a second-round pick back in 2020, appeared in 54 games with Carolina, but he has been an extremely versatile piece. Like we said, he can play safety, he can play slot corner, he can play box safety, right? He can play as a linebacker. The, these commanders needed help in the secondary, and now they have found a starting quality player in Jeremy Chin. Coming off a bad season, this is an excellent pickup, and I am so excited to see how Dan Quinn utilizes his true talent, and they pair him up with the teammate in Frankie Louvu as well. Man, I'm excited. And then they added another former, you know, Dan Quinn disciple, I guess you could say, well, player, in Dante Fowler, the former Dallas Cowboy defensive end, is on his way to the Commanders, and we're going to talk a little bit about another signing in Cleveland Farrell they made earlier in the day, uh, but this one actually changes a lot of things. Dante Fowler is a really good player, former number three overall pick in 2015, but this man has been really good under uh, Dan Quinn, and he's going to follow him to Washington. Let's talk a little bit about Dante Fowler. Now, the thing I love about Dante Fowler is just his consistency. Now, he's never had a year where he's gone over like 15 sacks or anything like that, but he can get to the quarterback, right? We've seen him four sacks, six sacks, four and a half sacks, three, 11 and a half back in 2019. So we can just tell the man has been very consistent. Maybe not what they thought he would be as a number three overall pick, but someone you can just rely on to be a day one starter or a rotational player. Now, this is going to be big news for the commanders as they have Dorrance Armstrong. We'll talk about him later. Cleveland Farrell, but now Dante Fowler. Like we said, he can play, uh, he can be a starting uh, end. He can be a rotational end, but I think him and Cleveland Fer Farrell will rotate in a lot with each other and make a big difference for this football team. And look at this. This will be the third time Fowler has played for Quinn. They first worked together back in 2020 when Quinn was the Falcons head coach. And now he is heading to Washington where he will be some depth here for the commanders and maybe even a starter. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think Fowler will be a starter? Do you think Cleveland Farrell will be the starter? Or do you think they'll go out and add maybe another player in the draft or maybe even in free agency. Let me know what you guys think about that. But now let's take a turn and talk about some of the earlier moves that they made this offseason. And this is the one that's really intriguing to me. Dorrance Armstrong, another Cowboy Disciple, very, very good under Dan Quinn, and he is going to run or add some insane pass rush juice to this defensive end position, which they needed, right? They traded Chase Young. You trade um, a guy in Montez Sweat to the Bears. You need some edge help. Now, real quickly, guys, let's look at what he's done over the past couple of years. This is a huge deal, pairing him up with some really good players here in the interior of the defensive line. And here we go. This is what I want you guys to focus on. This number right here, 
five sacks, eight and a half sacks, seven and a half sacks. Now, if you guys think about it, if you actually go back and look at the rankings from the video when I posted this, we noticed and we saw that the Commanders last season actually ranked number 25 in sack percentage. So not only do you get a guy who has been relatively consistent over the last past or the past three seasons under Dan Quinn, you're adding a guy with 23 sacks over, I mean, realistically three seasons, right? If you really want to say it, 20 sacks over three seasons, right? This is a huge pickup for the Washington Commanders who just add insane pass rush stability after getting rid of two guys in Chase Young who looks like he's going to leave, uh, you know, San Fran for nothing, right? He's going to leave San Francisco for nothing. Montez Sweat just signed a major extension, so shout out to him, but the Commanders made some great moves right away. Okay, so shortly after Dorrance Armstrong signed to the Washington Commanders, we saw Antonio Gibson leave the team and head to the New England Patriots, leaving that pass catching role up for grabs. And then, this is where you get Austin Eckler, the Chargers running back, who has been absolutely deadly for the past couple of seasons, but this last season was kind of underwhelming. However, with that being said, you add an elite, an elite pass catcher, a speedy back with great elusiveness, and he's not going to be asked to be a bell cow, which is massive. Guys, a two-year deal, very team-friendly, that goes up to $11 million. This is an absolute steal. And just like that, the Washington Commanders are off to the races. Like, we've already seen them do so much up to this point, but they don't stop here, right? Austin Eckler is a guy who can add so much versatility and a different dynamic outside of Brian Robinson, right? But already, what have we seen? A brand new starting center, a brand new starting tight end, a brand new running back, a new starting left defensive end, right? Alongside Jerron Payne and Jonathan Allen. But like I said, they didn't stop there. And if we break down what Austin Eckler has done throughout his career, we're going to see over the past four years, the man has been nothing but electric. But now, let's see what they did next. Now, before we get into the last four or five signings that they've made, and I know there only shows three here, but yeah, they've made more signings this morning. Before we get into that, do me a big favor, hit that like button just so we can get this video out to more Commanders fans around the world, but also subscribe to the channel if you're new. It is free, doesn't cost anything, and I'm posting every single Commander signing that you guys need to hear about. I got you guys covered, join the family. And also comment down below a letter grade for their offseason so far and what do you think they need to do next. But let's get back into the video. And then they sign Frankie Luvu and Dan Quinn gets an absolute perfect linebacker for his system, guy with about 12 sacks in his last two seasons, over 125 tackles last season for the Carolina Panthers. And then you look before that, 111. The man has been Mr. Consistent, and you add a pass rusher and a firm tackler to this defense on a three-year, $36 million deal. Frankie Louvre is going to be an absolute phenomenal fit. Not only do you add Dorrance Armstrong to Jerome Payne and Jonathan Allen in that front three, but then you add a Frankie Louvre in the second level with Jamin Davis. This is going to be a massive addition. However, with that being said, they still have a lot of work to do with the linebacker room. Cody Barton, free agent, uh, David Mayo, Dejon Harris, Kaliki Hudson, all free agents. They're going to need to go out and bring in some more linebackers in free agency or the draft. But you can start seeing the blueprint here of what Dan Quinn is trying to do in Washington right away. And then boom, we talked a little bit about Tyler B up here, but then go out and grab a starting guard in the NFL, a three-year, $16 million deal. What? A former Super Bowl champion, a starting guard in this NFL league for three years, 16 mil? Yeah, he might not be the perfect guy in the world, but you should see what Robert Hunt just got. Five years, 100 million, somewhere in that ballpark. This is an absolute great signing for the commanders as they look to continue to build this team from ground up i mean what an excellent job so far and then we got some breaking news this morning they went out and brought in cleveland farrell some more defensive end help with jason smith williams and uh casey two will being you know free agents they needed to add another weapon alongside this defensive line and you add a pretty solid one a very reliable guy who can be you know a bench player a role player could be a spot player st uh, spot starter now, I don't think he's a day one starter for them, but if you need someone to come off the bench and give you 20 snaps, he's the guy you want. Cleveland Farrell, former number four overall pick back in 2019 for Oakland, had three and a half sacks for 49ers last season, and will come to the commanders and maybe even revitalize his career under Dan Quinn. We see that happen a lot in the NFL, where guys go play for Dan Quinn and suddenly become beasts. 
yeah, we might see this with Cleon Farrell, and low-key, I hope it happens. And then, most recently, they had just signed Marcus Mariota, and I think this is a hint at what's to come, right? So they stay, sit at number two in the NFL draft, looking for a quarterback behind Sam Howell, and now Marcus Mariota. Now, with number two, you look at Marcus Mariota and say, well, he's a dual-threat quarterback, can run, can pass a little bit, can do a couple of different things, but he's not going to be asked to be a starter, right? He's going to be asked to be a leader, a, a veteran, a locker room guy, but also help develop their young quarterback. Maybe it's Sam Howell, but maybe. I might be looking too deep into it. Maybe Jaden Daniels. Maybe Jaden Daniels is their guy. When you look at Cliff Kingsbury in his past, you got Kyler Murray, Caleb Williams, Johnny Manziel. The guys are all dual threat quarterbacks. Dan um, Jaden Daniels is the definition of a dual threat quarterback, right? But also, Marcus Mariota is the definition of a dual threat quarterback. Maybe not as good as we thought he would be coming into the NFL, but he can help develop a guy that wants to play in this type of style. Guys, this could be hinting at Jaden Daniels possibly coming to Washington, which would be a perfect fit for the commanders who have completely rebuilt this offensive line, the tight end room, the running back room, and the defense is just getting started. Now, with all of that being said, we just went over pretty much every signing that they have so far. What do you think they need to do next? I think they need to bring in a safety, maybe a DB as well, like a corner. Uh, but other than that, I think they've done so, so good. Probably needed a left tackle. But man, they have gotten better. They still have more free agency, more of the draft, and a lot of money to spend. We'll see what they do next. Hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, join the family, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.